What's up? It's your girl, Brianna B. And make sure y'all tune into the hottest podcast in the city, Shy vs. Everybody. Yo, 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 what up, man? It's your boy, Shy. This is Shy vs. Everybody Podcast, episode number 14. We got a special guest in the building, man. She go by the name of So So. She's a creator and host of Detour Entertainment. Yep. Yep, yep. And she also has a social production where she takes pits videos for events, videos, promos, and other things. Mm -hmm. So, how you doing today? I'm good. I'm good. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you came, man. And you came on time, like we said. Most people come late, or sometimes they don't even call at all. Just don't show up. Right. <laughs> well, I was a few minutes late, and I was looking at my phone like, should I text them? Oh, no. Know, but yeah, no, it's all good. It's all good. <laughs> so, like I told you before, we was recording. We usually do this thing called "Salute Me While I'm Here." Um, I got the idea because um, my un- un- untragic deaths with a uh, slick B. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Kobe Bryant situation and just personal family members of mine and it's like a lot of times we don't salute people until they're gone right. you know what I'm saying it's not often that we go ahead and give you know what I'm saying those special people a shout out while they're still here to be able to you know get their flowers while they you know can still smell them and stuff like that mm-hmm. so uh, while you think of one person i go with mine uh, I'm going to salute I did two females um, I'm going to go with a male uh, my homeboy his name is Will Bullard uh, he played for the Harlem Girl Trotters um, he has his own clothing line and his own brand called uh, Bull Body. Um, it's all about fitness and stuff like that. Um, I'm going to salute him. Me and him, we grew up together in high school and stuff like that. And uh, I was one of those guys once he you know, went to school was like, man, he don't come back to the hood no more. He don't show love like he used to. But as I got older, I started to see like, you know, people grow up mm. and things happen. You know, you got family and you just sometimes you grow out of your situation. It's like, and I'm happy that, you know, he's not still in the hood. He's not, you know, saying he. He went out, you know, of his of his comfort zone and and did better for himself. He playing basketball. He been playing professional for ten years now. So he doing good for his family. He uh in a relationship. He has a young daughter. You know, he taking care of her. So a lot of times we say that somebody is a sellout or they forgot where he came from when really they're trying to make their life better for their family. Right. So you know, say I want to give him a, a shout out. We might not be as close as we used to be, but you know, what I'm saying I congrats you. I salute you, dog. So keep doing the big things. Hey, the Glo- Globe Trotter, that's what's up, though. Yeah, 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 for <laughs> sure, for sure. <laughs> um, well, I mean, there's a lot of people that I'd like to give a shout out um, to um, uh-huh. and recognize. I mean, I see so many people in Detroit that are just like coming up. You okay. know, I like to see people like that. Yeah. You know, start you know start from the bottom and then to see where they at. But uh, one person in particular um, who I'd I, I like to give a shout out to her name is Renee. Mm-hmm. She does. Um, videography and photography okay. um, under her brand urban outrage production mm-hmm. and um she's actually the person who connected me with my now partner okay right now i'm doing um interview so i'd like to give her a shout out for that you know okay. thanks for helping me keep my stuff moving and um everything but um yeah i just i love her work ethic and um i mean she's always traveling that's something that you know i strive to be able to do in the mm-hmm. future be able to travel for my work and everything like that oh so, yeah most definitely definitely uh Good worker right there. So Okay, that's what's up. That's what's up. Shout out. What's her name again? Renee? Renee. Okay, what's up, Renee? What's up? What's up? Now, another thing. It's still early in the year. It's March. We, uh, um, a quarter. You know what I'm saying? The year. Damn, this year went by fast. <laughs> well, it's going by fast. Right. But um, I've been asking uh, other uh, guests on the show, like, as far as 2019, if you can, give me some um, some ups and downs for the year of 2019. If, if there's no downs or all ups, you know, it could be. Right, right, right. <laughs> okay, some ups. 2019, I say, um, we found out we were pregnant. Okay. Congrats. Congrats. That's yeah, always yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, at December 2019. So, that's definitely an up. Oh, yeah. Most definitely. Um, 
Let's see. Do I have any more ups? Any more ups? I mean, I'm alive. I was alive. Oh, yeah, it's always up. <laughs> That's always up. Still got a job through 2019. So. Oh, yeah. Need that. For real. It was hard uh, on here. Like I said, I did uh, start my um, new platform in 2019, too. Okay. So I had an older platform. Yeah. Um, so that was also good. Able to continue that. Mm -hmm. um, some downs. Um, I don't have too many downs. Mm -hmm. Um. I say my little cousin keep getting expelled. That's, oh, that's man. getting irritating. Oh, boy, boy uh, girl. Boy. How old is he? 15. Oh, man. 15. Yeah, you got to do better, man. You got to get up there. I got some kids in my school. I'm like, I coach basketball. Mm -hmm. I coach middle school, and I'll be, so, man, so surprised with the things that these, these kids is doing. Like, yeah. I know I ain't no grandparent, but I had <laughs> a kid get suspended for having sex with a girl in the hallways. Ooh, like in the hallway. Yeah, like they duck off in a little <laughs> corner that nobody really go to. I'm like... Wow. At 13, I was only like just dreaming, like man, like I wasn't even trying to pursue right. it. Like wow. <laughs> they out here getting it in, like that's so, crazy. Then, then I had one kid who played for me. He actually got suspended for getting caught twice having sex in school, mm. and he got to go to finish his schooling at home on the computer. Wow. So yeah, it's like, come on, man, like just go to school, <laughs> we'll get your education, man. Stop getting in trouble. Right. And he said, "This is your nephew." No, my cousin. Your cousin? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, he got to do better. He got to do better. Do better, man. Yeah, my I, I always say this, my low. It I mean, it hurt. My love for 2019 was just getting that good boy head. No. Like, <laughs> like Ooh, you, you, you got a boy head? Let me see. No, no. Yeah, I need her cut. Head on. <laughs> you take your head off. I need her cut. I'll show you after, afterwards. <laughs> but it was a sad day. It's like, you know, as a, as a dude, when you get that fresh cut, you, you feel good about yourself. <laughs> and, you know, after them cuts, it's like, I wasn't feeling good. I was feeling yeah. stupid. Like, oh, what am I doing? Like, what am I saving? There ain't even nothing up there, like, for real. Yeah. I got ways on the side. My uh, fiance cousin told me I was like, "You got baby hair on top." Cause uh. it's to, uh, damn. <laughs> so uh, I did the I did the cut, you know, right before his birthday. We went to Denver, and this dude was so happy because I finally cut my hair off. Like mm -hmm. I couldn't hold on. I couldn't be LeBron James out here. I couldn't be out here when the sun hit. You see all scalp like right. It was just, <laughs> it was just all bad. That's so funny. That was like a down. I'm still trying to get used to it. I'm gonna do an episode with my head out one day. Mm -hmm. I couldn't do it today though. I forgot to get haircut, so it's all good. <laughs> now was it gradual? Yeah. You know, it kind of went yeah. bald. Like, you start to notice, like, once I was trying to get the baby fro, how, like, the sides was looking a little thicker than the top. Yeah. Like, damn, it's coming. It's coming. <laughs> but I was still getting away with it as long as I get cut every week. Mm -hmm. It was looking real good. Okay, okay. But I told you, I, I told this story before. What hit me was uh, at my fiance aunt funeral. Mm -hmm. I'm at the funeral. It's a sad day. It's supposed to be. We there. I get her cut that morning. That morning. So her dad, like, come here. I'm like, what? Man, your shit fucked up. <laughs> in, the, in the funeral, like, man, cut that. So now he got me feeling uncomfortable the whole time I'm in the funeral. I'm just thinking about my head. Right. Now my, my fiance auntie, like. So as soon as I got out of there, put my head on next weekend, cut my hair off. Mm. I had to. I was tired of getting well, I jokes. Say, yeah, he, he messed up your self-confidence. Yeah, man. like, man. that whole day, I'm like, just <laughs> think about my head, like. Rest in peace, auntie, but my hair was terrible. Man, man, rest in peace to your hair, huh? Yeah. Like, rest in peace to that. Man. I know, cause, but I can't <laughs> say. I'm 30, I'm 33. Mm. I went the longest out all my brothers were here and my dad. Okay. Everybody, my younger brother went boy at 23, my brother at 21, my dad at 25. Oh. So I made it through my whole How 20s. I was able to get the girls with the hair, get the yeah. braids, had the Irish braids, all that good stuff. <laughs> so, so it was inevitable. You yeah, know. had waves and stuff, but... <laughs> Oh, yeah, man. Dang, so yeah, that's, that's messed up. Yeah, it's messed up for real. Yeah. So, um, before we get into your business, everything you're doing, like, give us a little, uh, give us a little story about your, your come up and stuff. You grew up in Detroit, outside, east side, west side. Yeah, um, well, I'm from Detroit, but I grew up in Taylor, actually. Mm -hmm. Been out there since I was uh, 11. 11? Okay. Yeah. Um, I mean, not much going on out there. You know, Taylor's pretty small yeah, or yeah. whatever. Um, wasn't really a bad kid okay. at all. I think the only trouble I ever got into, I was so at like 17 and I stole from uh, Walmart, <laughs> you know, but that's about it. What did you, uh, what did you steal from Walmart though? Something that, look, something that, <laughs> then I, I had a job too, okay. while you playing. I worked at Taco Bell, my first job. Okay. Got paid that day. And then I had this friend Man. who, we went to Walmart and she's like, you know, you know, she wanted like some stuff out of there or whatever like that. So I'm just, you know, going along with it. Yeah, you know, yeah. that type of peer pressure type stuff. So, yeah. and we took like some nail polish and <laughs> some <laughs> some, he um, <laughs> some headbands and stuff like that. So stuff stuff I could have just bought. Did you get caught? I did get caught. Oh my! And God. what's so crazy is so 
we thinking we getting away. You know how they do. You make it all the way to the door, and then that's when they want to walk up on yeah, you. So that's yeah, how they yeah. did. With the regular clothes on. That's how they did. <laughs> yeah. So I was I was scared. And I was seventeen too. So yeah. um, I was considered an adult. Yeah. Whatever. And she was sixteen. So right. you know they let her go home to her mama, but I, my mama had to bail me out. <laughs> and when when she came and bailed me out, she was like um. I was gonna leave you in here and stuff yeah, like that. I'm so like, they go uh, scrunchies. And <laughs> right, right. Like I, mean, I remember at 17. I think we all did some stupid stealing. Right. Like, I remember at, um, we used to go to Target, me and my uh, my boy Reg. But we would uh, we would go during the week, like after school, and um, we would take CDs or we would get CDs and we would go like to like a uh, sporting good aisle and we uh, put our hands in the, in like where the basketball is at, so you can't see us. Mm -hmm. Crack the CD open, take the CD out, and then take it. So this one particular day, I'm like, all right, I'm gonna get all eyes on me, Tupac. He got Trick Daddy. I forgot they were gonna see that it was still <laughs> motivation or something. Some I don't know. And um, we go and do it. It's a Saturday though. I'm not knowing that they got regular people dressed up doing security at Target mm -hmm. on a Saturday. So I get the CD, bam. He get the CD. So then we go into the front, like you said. Here they come. And then I'm like, I check my own self before they check me. I just had to see my front <laughs> pocket. Like, look, I ain't got nothing. Put it in the back pocket, like. Mm -hmm. And my boy Red was like, man, here. So he did the same thing. He took him downstairs, took a picture of him. So he they say he couldn't come back into that right, mall right. again. So right. that was some stupid stuff. Like I say, they always say that too. I went back to Walmart like, <laughs> yeah. that next week. I went week. back to East yeah. that yeah. next week too. Like you ain't we come on, mom. Now, but oh, but so um yeah so that was that you know the childhood and then I actually started um I wasn't always into like videography and photography like mm -hmm. growing up. Okay. I wish I had because I feel like I'd be way along than where I'm at now. But um yeah. I did like to take photos of myself. You know, okay. so, uh, and my girlfriend at the time, who's now my wife, uh, mm. you know, she kind of picked up on that and she brought me my first camera for Valentine's Day. That's what's up. And um, then from there, I mean, I started to learn more stuff like off YouTube and then mm. dabble like more into it. So, and that was around um, 2017 was when I officially stepped out and started like doing it for real. Mm -hmm. um, as far as like my brand, so, so, um production i started that in 2015 okay okay yeah. okay now i want to get to that but uh before like since i know you do like a lot of interviews with music artists and stuff like that mm -hmm. what was the stuff you was brought up on because for the most part when we listen to music as kids we we go off where our parents listen to right and i know with me like i didn't really listen to rap because my mom and dad wasn't really no you know big rap fans mm -hmm. it was like you know the temptations like the whole motown stuff right. and like uh bob marley like my dad play all type of stuff so like i didn't get to really listen to rap until i got older mm -hmm. so what was some stuff like your mom or dad like would you stay with your mom and dad my mom my mom what yeah. was your stuff your mom was playing like on those saturday mornings when she cleaned the house up and stuff making breakfast um let's see she would probably do like mainly what i heard from her she liked to listen to like eminem jay-z yeah. oh she was a rap head dude. yeah <laughs> <laughs> she also liked uh like gospel music too and then okay. like R&B, so yeah. I'm an R&B head. Yeah, 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 I love R&B. Real like. talk, so that's like the main stuff I listen to. Yeah, like, you like what you like now, this new day R&B or like the old school R&B? Old R&B, yeah. Like, who are some people like me? Like, who who's your favorite group? Because <laughs> me, I'm going to tell you, this is the only group that never broke up. Or, well, it might broke up, but nobody never did like no solo uh, albums. Mm -hmm. Jagged Edge. Jack, okay, Jagged yeah, Edge I like, like Jagged Edge. Yeah, Jack, cause they, they only group 112, you asked Slim to do his own thing. Of right, course, right. Edition, everybody just, you know, did right. their own thing. But Jagged Edge is like the one group that every uh, all music was them together. Mm -hmm. It was never like nobody did their own solo thing. Right. Who was your, who you? Uh, I mean, this is going to sound corny, but I, I have to say Destiny's Child because I oh, was yeah. kind of obsessed with Beyonce. So yeah, 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 <laughs> that yeah, yeah, was like yeah. my favorite group. Now, my brother cussed me out in the barbershop because I said Kelly Rowland looked better than Beyonce. I just like. <laughs> I mean, I mean, he cussed me off for everybody. This nigga dumb. <laughs> <laughs> I like Kelly Rowland better. Beyonce, I'm sorry. Yeah, you like the chocolate. Yeah, I, I um, my light skinned girlfriend kind of uh, disappointed me. My, my first <laughs> light skinned girlfriend. So ever since then, I always had like a, a dark skinned girlfriend. Dark skinned. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. But she cute. Uh, yeah, yeah, I like Destiny Child. I mean, I like uh. Kelly Rowland. Yeah. Michelle, everybody always know her and stuff like. <laughs> she the underdog of the group. Yeah. Man. Who else would you uh, rock with like? I was listening to like uh, Marcus Houston and Immature and mm -hmm. like uh, my favorite singer was probably like I don't know it's, it's it was R. Kelly and stuff like that but yeah. I guess we can't listen to him no more. Right. <laughs> I mean I do yeah I do stuff like uh, Case. Um, oh Case Cole yeah, yeah. I mean I listen to even you know stuff outside of that genre like In Sync. I mean mm -hmm. all, all oh, that yeah. stuff you know yeah, yeah, so. Yeah. But you know one song I never really understood um, that was a selfish song, Carl Thomas. Okay. That uh, yeah. like like he really what was the name of that he song? Wish. 
Yeah, I wish I never met her. Yeah. But like he was just like, <laughs> if you listen to this song, like damn, he didn't give. He like, he, he like, I know you got a kid and and a husband. Like, what about me? Like, right. damn, you say forget her son. Huh? Like, <laughs> That's and, my shit. Though, <laughs> <you're playing. laughs> and another song is uh, as stupid to me that I used to listen to was uh, Mario Lyons. Okay. Um. Um. <sighs> What's that junk? I don't want to know if she playing me. Keep it on the low. Okay. Like, if you playing me, I want to know. Like, don't keep it on the low. Like, if you mess around with Craig, I want to know if you mess around. Right. And tell, like, I don't want to know. Like, I want to know. If you playing me, cuz. Like, I want to know what's going on. But yeah, uh, and, but nowadays, like, I listen to, um, I like her. Uh, I like Daniel Caesar. Uh, I just got on the, um, Lucky Day. Mm -hmm. Like, who you listen to now as far as R&B? Man, I don't even really... Like I said, I'm more of a old school R and B head, yeah, so yeah, like yeah. that's mainly like what I listen to. And when I'm in the car too, I literally drive in silence. I like to hear myself yeah. think. You know, sometimes that's like good that. though. <laughs> sometimes that's um, good. But let's see if, if uh, I like Chris Brown. I, be messing to? I rock with Chris Brown heavy. I don't know. There's yeah. There's nobody in particular. Like Neo and Chris Brown, like the people like with the first three album Neo. Neo mm -hmm. now I don't, I don't really rock with him. Like, yeah, I know. Um, Lately, though, I've really been liking Roddy Rich. He's not an R&B. Yeah, but. yeah, yeah. But that's the type of rap, like, that's the type of rap that's kind of like, it's like a whole bunch of rap singing, because you got Roddy Rich, you got yeah. uh, Lil Dirt, he do a lot, uh, Rod Wave, mm -hmm. stuff like that. But Roddy Rich is cold. My, my son actually put me on him. Like, yeah. He put me on, like, the new little dudes, because he, like, 12, 13, mm -hmm. so. And Dad, you, you hear this? Like, that's whack. That's corny. <laughs> oh, that's straight, that's straight. Like, so he be put me on. Like, actually, he asked me a crazy question the other day, like, uh, he was like, without streaming um, um, devices, like, what, how was I listening to, like, songs without having to buy the whole CD? And I'm like, damn, that's a good question. Like, <laughs> like you had to really go buy, like, a mixtape from, like, a bootleg man and, like, get those songs that you, right. you know, wasn't really hearing. Like, because he'd be on SoundCloud. Like, now you got so much access to music. Like, you can mm -hmm. listen to wherever you want to, when you want to. Yeah, yeah. So, like, we were talking about you growing up. Like, did you, uh, at the high school, what high school did you go to? Um, it's Kennedy. Kennedy. Yeah. Did you uh, go to college afterwards, or? Yeah, I went to um, Wayne State for mm -hmm. uh, social work. Social work. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, did you continue over there, or no? Like, as far as like working afterwards, because a lot yeah. of times you get those degrees and it just be up there collecting dust, like. Right, right. <laughs> so I I did um, go into that field briefly, but okay. backed out of it shortly after because found out it wasn't for me. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. But I still use the skills, you know, that social work skill, the talking and all of that, and. Mm -hmm listening and stuff so um those go me wherever i go so okay okay now you say uh your, your profession as far as like your uh the way you, you do your interviews and stuff like that which one was first was it the social -so production or was it the detour uh, ent the social -so production that's that's the mother company right there okay when yeah. you, you say you say it started in 2015 yeah 2015 okay so what made what made you want to get into like the whole thing besides your uh, girlfriend at the time buying you a camera um, like I said, I, I really like taking photos of like myself. Mm. Like I mean, for me, taking a photo is like it's timeless. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like you're, you're <laughs> capturing a moment forever. And you that's know funny what I mean? you say it because like remember like I know with me I used to love going to my grandma house and look at the same photo album mm -hmm. every time I went over there. The same <laughs> album. Like damn, mom had the afro. Like yeah. <laughs> but like now you go through your phone. And it's like you. <laughs> Like, sometimes the phone is a good thing, but sometimes it's, like, a bad thing. Because, like, it's just a memory thing. Mm -hmm. Like, with those pictures, you just going through the book. Like, right. with the phone, you got, hey, hold on. Don't look at that picture. Oh, that's nasty. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> like, you got to go right to the picture. Like, I'm about to say, you got to tell them, like, only scroll three over. Don't scroll no more than that, man. Don't go too far. You might see something crazy with your mama. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, like, those, like you said, those pictures, like, those, mm -hmm. those are, like, like timeless things. Yeah. Like. And plus, like, you know, I, I don't have any photos of me from, like, childhood. I don't know what I look like as a baby or anything like that. So, My brother said the same thing. For me, it's just, I don't know. I just love taking photos. And when we have our own kids, it's going to be photos galore. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. what I do now. Like, as far as my, I got a 13-year-old and a 3-year-old. Mm -hmm. Big gap, but... Of course, my 13-year-olds with my high school girlfriend, stuff like that, mm -hmm. didn't work. So, I got a three-year-old, but, you know, it's always pictures all the time. My 13-year-old used to like taking pictures, but now he's too cool. Mm -hmm. So, he's like, come on, man. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, with your interviews, I noticed that you do, like, a lot of, like, Vlad-type interviews and stuff like that. Was that the inspiration behind the way you interview people? Um, Somewhat. I have, like, I looked at a few um, interviewers. So, like, Vlad, I looked at... Um, DJ Smalls, mm -hmm. um, of course, the Breakfast Club. So oh, yeah. I, I went and um, investigated like a few of those, mm -hmm. yeah, and just kind of 
hopefully came up with my own type of yeah. thing. So like, do you watch like a lot of interviews or not? Like like Breakfast Club, Vlad, yeah, different things like yeah, that. Yeah, I do. Who is uh, who's your go to? Like, what's the first thing you looking at? Like when you when you on YouTube, I know I'm always checking out the Breakfast Club mm -hmm. first. Like that was yep. like the first time I really got to hold watching YouTube videos and stuff was like. Breakfast Club and Sway in the Morning. Mm -hmm. And I had to actually put him on because he hated Charlamagne, but I'm like, dog, Charlamagne is the truth. Right. Like, without him, I wouldn't watch the Breakfast Club. Right. He did, he did, he a character yeah. in there. Because so. I don't care if they got, if Michael Jackson came back from the dead was on there, Charlamagne not on there, I'm not watching it. Because, yeah. like, envy and ye is like, it's boring to me. Yeah. <laughs> so, what's, what's the uh, interview you remember, like, that stood out as far as uh, the Breakfast Club that, that was like, uh, you ain't, favorite? you ain't gonna, I cannot remember the name, and I actually was trying to find this interview. <laughs> And she was a comedian. I forgot. I wish I could remember her name. But the thing that stood out to me was when I'm looking at interviews, like I like for it to be fun. Yeah, you know yeah, what yeah, I mean? Yeah. And I don't like it for it to be like, you know, accusatory or trying to, um, I guess, I don't want to be like Vlad getting somebody in trouble. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? And stuff like that. Like I'm just there to help uplift, mm -hmm. to help you promote yourself. Like that's the slogan. We promote you. You yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, That's sure. what I'm trying to do. But yeah. the girl or whatever, um, you know, like when you're doing interviews mm -hmm. and um, sometimes people be like, well, you know, I don't want you to touch on this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't, you know, don't say nothing about this. So, but on the Breakfast Club, you know, Charlemagne and stuff like yeah. that, he, he gonna touch on it regardless. So, he gonna dig deep. deep. <laughs> right, right. So, he, uh, he asked the girl a question and she literally like went down her chair. She was like... <laughs> Oh, I gotta go find that one. She's <laughs> like Charlemagne. No, you did it. Like oh, I'm man. like, oh my god, yeah. My favorite one with him was when him and um Onyx was going at it. Uh, the one dude when he was he asked her asked him about when he was like, uh, I guess Brandy supposed to gave him head on Moesha. Remember Q on mm -hmm. Moesha, and he they was getting into it. And then of course the one with Birdman, even though it was only two <laughs> minutes long, but that one. But Charlemagne is like. Uh, you could tell he and grew as a uh, as a as a as a uh, radio uh, personality. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. he, because if you look at those early days when he was dark skinned <laughs> to now, like it's like a night and day thing. But you know, he still he still stay the same, and like mm. he can do his own thing. I still I just follow his whole little movement. I was just like I yeah. like what he do. He actually do do his own interviews too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen a couple of those as well. Yeah, what's that? Mike got in some trouble that uh, Gucci man was. <laughs> oh yeah. Now as okay, say me and you on the team and stuff like that as far as like you interviewing somebody outside of our platform and the way he was talking down on Angela Yee would you have stopped it or maybe cut it out or how would you have took that approach no I wouldn't have stopped it or cut it out yeah. I mean that's that person's opinion you know mm -hmm. what I mean what what he feels on her now I would have been objective I wouldn't have been like oh yeah you know I know yeah. what you're saying you know I would have yeah. been the objective person but no I wouldn't have cut that out yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and then like I said I'm quite sure he probably told her like listen this is what happened mm -hmm. but I, you can kind of tell it started to calm down but you could tell it was a little tension between the, them two he after was, that after the main yeah because mm -hmm. it's not the same like it's just a little different, but they starting to get back to it. I mean, they can kick her out anyway. Like to me, like, <laughs> I mean, I, I respect a woman being on the show, but it's like with her, like I don't know. It's just she mm. never bring nothing good to the table to me. The gossip. Yeah, that's that's about <laughs> it. So, uh, have you ever like doing interviews? I remember, um, I had some family on the show. I had to change some things and cut some things out because it could have caused a a big problem. Mm -hmm. Like, and I don't think I'm ever inviting family on the show again because <laughs> they was like, "Come on, let me get on the show." I'm like, all right, mm -hmm. but they said some stuff that was. It shouldn't have been said at the time. I'm interviewing them and I'm not really paying attention. But after he sent me his stuff, I always listen to it on the way home. I'm like, oh shit. I call my girl, like, uh, yeah. Uh, we gonna, I'm gonna call Q and cut some stuff out. Have there ever been an interview with you, that somebody hit you up, like, I need to, I need this off? And if not, if somebody hit you up and said, I need this off, would you be, you know, saying cool with cutting it off? Well, we've actually just recently had, um, uh two interviews mm -hmm. that just happened <laughs> and I'm, I'm trying to convince them like you're like man you know yeah. what I mean you know you did the interview and stuff like that I ain't see nothing wrong with it it was all good you That's know everything like that <laughs> 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 but um but yeah um but I respect people wishes especially now because mm -hmm. um you know, we didn't have them people sign no contract. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, 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 yeah. But that prompted me to be like, you know, moving forward, mm -hmm. now we're going to have to sign some contracts yeah. here. Because those interviews are like revenue. Okay, you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. That's, that's future money for us. So yeah. to have, you know, 
of course, as you know, it's the artist interviews and mm -hmm. stuff like that. But to have them kind of dictate, yeah, what's going on. You know so, what I mean? Yeah, you know, so put like, it up, put it down. You know, th this is my my business is doing these you. interviews, that so you sense. can't dictate my you know my yeah, business. How I do. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah. I, I respect their wishes, and I did mm -hmm. bring it down. Yeah. But just so everybody know, in the future when we sign these contracts, yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, it's going to be my say so whether I take it down or not. And see, the only reason <laughs> I did with this particular uh, person is because it was family. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, I would have been the person getting heat from everybody. Right. My fiance. Oh my god, I ain't gonna even talk about it because. <laughs> but I would have been the person to be like, you know, why do you do that? Like. I was just working like that's why I say when you come here I always ask like is there anything you don't want me to touch right, on right, right. off the rip so I know and um so what sticking on it like what make a bad interview like you've been interviewing people like what, what make a bad interview like damn it's like <laughs> or even watching other people get interviewed what make what what you think make a bad interview um I think the energy level mm -hmm. you know if you have somebody that just not real talkative and stuff like that, oh, yeah, that. you know real grand <laughs> or short short questions mm -hmm. like a lot of times the person that's interviewing plays off the energy of the person that's yeah, being interviewed yeah, 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 yeah. so if they kind of bland and you bland and and the whole interview is just boring oh yeah um also I think like um you know if you're too intoxicated mm -hmm. you know it's mm. It's interesting right, to watch. Right, right. It's interesting <laughs> to watch, but you got to keep it at a limit. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. said I didn't say you couldn't, but I said too and yeah, to yeah. the point where you just you falling out yeah. and everything yeah. like that. I mean, what what interview did I see? I think it was um um. That's what you got. What's the Tatiana? Um, oh, blue face. Guy, blue face. Yeah, yeah. It was yeah. him. He did an interview. Yeah. I don't know if he was high as hell or what it was, but. I mean, he was out in space when <laughs> yeah. that man was asking him. That's questions. why you gotta respect Snoop. Snoop be high <laughs> as hell, but his like, you do you ever watch this uh, show, the GGN? No. Mm -hmm. Oh, you gotta watch mm -hmm. that. That is hilarious. <laughs> like, he is a comedy, but he be on there high as ever, and yeah. everything just go perfect. Right. Like everything, but he been doing it forever. So oh, yeah, I was about to say, like, like some people, yeah. That's like drinking water for him while he's yeah. smoking weed. So, <laughs> so um. I know we talked about this earlier as far as like you uh, having interviews come on, but how do you prepare for an interview? Like if I'm coming on your show, how do you prepare for me? Um, if you don't know too much about me. Right. So I do research through like the social media platforms. So like Instagram, Facebook, mm -hmm. um, YouTube. Mm -hmm. um, I do um, Apple Music. You know, okay. I, listen, I listen to everybody's music. And okay. uh, then I also, you know, search on um, the internet just to see what I can find. Yeah, 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 Sometimes yeah. too, I'll ask people to send me like a small, you know, description of something. Yeah, something yeah. Brief, okay, I'm gonna start doing that too, like. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But that's mainly what I do. I do that, and like I said, if, if I could, yeah, I hire somebody to come. <laughs> get yeah, that's a good thing. I hire somebody just to find some stuff out. Right, like, right. That's what battle rappers be doing like <laughs> getting a little chick to go over there. <laughs> so have you ever had like an awkward interview? Like, oh, this is getting a little. Let me. I want to end this right, real, real quick. Like. Um, no. Mm -hmm. No. Not yet, at least. Okay, good, mm -hmm. good, good. And now, uh, when did you feel like, as an interviewer, like, that you was like, man, I'm doing, I'm doing pretty good. Like, I'm, gr I'm good at this. Like, this is something I can, I can see myself doing a long, long time. Um, I'll say, probably on my uh, first platform, maybe about halfway in, mm -hmm. um, because I found myself being able to, some of the artists that we interview aren't, you know, artists that are high up there you know what I mean yeah. we interview a lot of underground artists that are trying to like get seen and stuff like that mm -hmm. and it may be artists that don't really have a lot of content mm -hmm. and I think one of the um the artists that we interviewed he said man like you made me feel like I had a lot going on yeah, you know yeah, what I mean yeah. just from your interview and yeah. that made me like okay you know I can really yeah, do this being sure. able to do something like that and, and have somebody feel like they was already yeah. a celebrity yeah, okay. you know what that's I mean so, yeah. Yeah. that's what's up so so um what's your vision um going on with the future with uh, Detroit and ENT? Well, like I said, I really look up to like the Breakfast Club and those different types of uh, platforms, so I really want to be able to get it to that type of status. Mm -hmm. um, if I could get it on like a radio station, that would be what's mm -hmm. up. Um, but yeah, definitely want to do something like that. Mm -hmm. um, shoot, I don't know. Just, just <laughs> I want it to grow substantially. I want to be able to, to have like more segments for it. Okay. You know, like okay. um, maybe get to uh, start throwing shows for different artists and things yeah, like that, know, showcases. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. So I, and then like while we still on this, like how do you go about finding guests? Because with me, I just you know I go through the hashtags. So that's how I found you when I was talking to you and stuff like that on Instagram. Just going through stuff, I try to like send my uh, 
my interview is to like at least five, six different people every night before mm -hmm. I go to bed. Stuff. So how do you go about finding artists or do artists reach out to you or a little bit of both? Well, it's, it's a little bit of both. Mm -hmm. um, so like I said, my old platform, when we when I uh, started that, well, we were reaching out to a lot of artists. And I think because I had that old platform, mm -hmm. that on this new one, um, I'm just I'm getting a lot of people reach out to me. There okay. have been a few that I've reached out to as well, but mainly it's people reaching out to me. Okay. Um, um, and then also, you know, if I see somebody that you know I like the music or yeah. something like that, then I'll reach out to them. Okay. Um, we do showcases and stuff like that, so we yeah. do like on-site interviews and showcases, and that yeah. also helps to bring people Come, uh, yeah, on yeah. as well. Yeah. Okay. Cool. And uh, I got this is a two-part question. Uh, Detroit and just overall. Who would your dream guest, male and female for Detroit, and dream guest, male and female, just overall? Dream guest. Like mine's overall, but I like think mine's is like for a dude, Will Smith. Like, Hell yeah, he's Will just Smith. the truth. Like <laughs> and his interviews be like he's a good interviewer. Like, yeah. Interview, yeah. And I would love as a female, I would love to interview Lauren Hill, just okay. to see like, cause to me she had one of the greatest albums of all time as a solo artist, but it, that was it. Mm -hmm. We never got anything after that. So I would like to ask her, like, as far as the music, why, she, why she's so low-key with it, right, you know right. what I'm saying? You don't see her too much. As far as Detroit, I love to interview uh, Dave's Loaf. And as a rapper, I would, uh, well, not even a rapper, as a ball player, I like Jalen Rose. Mm -hmm. uh, just because he's doing a lot of stuff. He got a school here. And like it's like life after basketball with him is, is like, he's more famous after basketball than he was, you know, while he was playing basketball. Right. Um, I'm trying to think who who would I want to interview. Yeah, that's that great question right there. Yeah. <laughs> like your favorite your favorite person. Like I will even Will Smith it'd be Will Smith slash Obama. <laughs> you wanna know what's so funny? I was thinking on bottom of my head, but I'm like, maybe I shouldn't say that. Sounds cheesy. No, I'm not gonna do like the interview, like for real. Right. Um I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Come come back to me later yeah. on that question. So yeah, on your platform, make sure you ask that question. That's a yeah, shut down question. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. And um, as far as like um, 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 Detroit rappers and stuff, I know you you know you deal with a lot of Detroit artists and stuff. Do you feel like the city of Detroit is overlooked as far as music? And if so, like, what do you think can can make that like change? Definitely, I think they're um, overlooked. I mean, there's so much talent here. Like like I said, just. The artists that we interview, you mm -hmm. know, I may not have heard them when I heard them. Like, dang, like you yeah. sound real good. You yeah, know, cause I know you. Um, Tez Hancho, I was on his show before. Mm -hmm. I know you did him. And uh, who was the one guy you did? It was uh, his music was pretty dope? The R&B dude you just did. I guess he was like cool with Tez Hancho. Dude had dreads and stuff. Uh, oh, um, Karan. Yeah, his, yeah. his music was pretty dope. Yeah. Pretty dope. Yeah, you gotta get me on the show. I do music too. <laughs> All right, look. All right. Just, just let me know. I get yeah, you on yeah, yeah. So yeah, but so how you think we can change? Like, is it maybe like because people are scared of Detroit? Um, I don't think that's the case. I mean, because there are people that come here. Yeah. I mean, there's people that we may not know about them. They come here. They making music and we, stuff like we that. We people out too, though. <laughs> we, don't, we don't see it, but it's happening. But I think yeah. that. Um, I mean, I, and I hear this a lot, and I do have to agree with it, is that Detroit got to be more supportive of oh, each yeah, other. Oh, yeah, for like, sure. We got to uh, uplift each other, and that's basically what I'm trying to do with this platform is, like, uplift every artist that I can, you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. And not just be, like, sticking with just, like, these certain artists and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that if we can all come better together, like, as a collective, yeah, you know. Most definitely. Do you ever feel like... I know a lot of times, like, we, do you feel like we have a Detroit sound or do you feel like people like a Detroit copycat? Because to me, I always say, like, before, oh, I believe Doughboy Cash Out is the fathers of everybody after them. Mm -hmm. Because I think everybody kind of, like, stole their style, their beats and stuff like that. Before them, you got to think about Tom Tom has his own sound, mm -hmm. KDZ has his own sound, Blade Icewood, rest in peace, um, KDZ, like, it was like a different type of sound, but it's like, after Boy Doughboy Cash, I was like, and yeah, maybe Team Eastside, you can put them in there. It's like everybody kind of like feel under that umbrella. Of like, yeah. Do you feel like it's a copycat or just like you would just say see that as a Detroit sound? I mean, I would say it as a Detroit sound. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I would say the Detroit sound, but like I said, I didn't heard a lot of artists like, and they don't have that typical Detroit yeah, yeah, yeah. sound either. So. Yeah, I just had somebody on here named uh, Kyle Matt. Yeah. I don't know if you heard of him, mm -hmm. but yeah, he got his own little sound and stuff. Yeah. Like, yeah. So I mean, and in Detroit too. I mean, you 
there's a lot of songs in Detroit that you wouldn't think. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you may hear a, a um um uh, what's that song? Uh, like I'm drawing a blank. <laughs> um, Old Town Road. You may oh, hear yeah, some yeah. something like that in Detroit. You know yeah. what I mean? So yeah. there's there's all different types of stuff. Yeah, because I'm starting to like now. Like I didn't really rock with his music, but now I'm starting to like him. Like as an individual and his music, uh, Solid Baby. Okay. Like this dude is super hype. Like I can see him like. <laughs> At a concert, like I'm enjoying my time, like because yeah. hey, you got some people you know too cool, but this dude dancing. I was about like, to say, yeah, he definitely a dancer, man. <laughs> yeah. creating his own stuff. Like, like, like he is. He, I, I'm starting to warm up to him and stuff. Like, I like him. I like, uh, I like payroll because mm-hmm. payroll to me, he taught stuff like kind of like how Young Jeezy, mm-hmm. you know, what I'm saying he kind of like taught that stuff. I like kid. I kind of like Dope Boy Cash Out, you know what I'm saying, as a as a collective. Mm-hmm. Like, I just feel like they just, like I said, they started this whole little, you know, Detroit wave. I like yeah. uh, GT. Like, who are some people like that we might not know that you rock with? Um, I like Vezo. Yeah, oh um, yeah, Vezo. I actually yeah, yeah. got his whole little, yeah. little CD um, or project in my phone and everything. Like, that. <laughs> pop on every time I come in my car. <laughs> yeah. Um... But I mess with, um, like I said, him. I do mess with Sada Baby. I actually remember um, him before he blew up because I used to go to these um, um, these other showcases. Um, her name was Temperance. Okay. And um, he was there. I've seen him like perform for the first time and everything like that. And then shortly after he blew up. So, yeah, I was working with him even, even before all of that. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. Yeah, Sada Baby, yeah. Him um, and... Uh, and uh, who was that dude? Peasy, he he locked up and stuff. Oh, yeah. I, he like it like I I'm I, I'm not gonna lie. Sometimes I'll be like, dog, like it sounds the same. Like come on, man, you got the same beat, same cadence. Like switch up a little bit. You feel me? It's like, yeah, I but, never really listened to Peasy too much. Yeah, yeah. But, like but then I start thinking about like maybe like you know Chicago. Everybody kind of sound like similar. West Coast is similar, so maybe it's just a Detroit sound. But I think with some artists. They just be like, all right, they blew up. Let me do the same thing, same beat. Mm-hmm. And then everybody's a drug king. Like, come <laughs> on, bro. Like, and then everybody can can kill like dog. But when you see them throw them hands, like nobody can throw hands. Mm-hmm. Like, like, man, come on, man. Like, not. I think some some rapper. I think is just like, okay, that's they sound. But some rappers, I, I really do believe, like they just you know copying the next person flow. Mm-hmm. So I mean, yeah, there are artists out here that do that. That that's not really them. Yeah. You know what I mean? But they just trying to do what they feel is popular yeah. to try and get out there. Oh yeah. So. Now, have you ever tried to do music? <laughs> I, I, yeah, that's a yes. <laughs> what was your rap name? Come on. No, no, I've never tried to do music. No. Have you but, thought about it? Yes, I have actually. Okay. I have, and I actually um, attempted to like write a song, but it never came to fruition at all. Yeah. So. Yeah. See, me, me, I ain't gonna lie. When I did music, the only reason I did music is I love, I always love rap. Mm-hmm. But when at nineteen, when my my girl this time said she was pregnant, I'm like, what's the fastest way I can make a million? And I'm like, I can rap. Right. So I used to, what I used to do was I um, listen to like people who wasn't known, and I steal their first two bars, and then I rap off of it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so uh, matter of fact, K D Z, Red, he stole, we stole his whole. Um, remember, he had a song called uh, some chopping this in the seat, full fill for my lap, whatever it was. We stole that whole, the way he rapped that whole thing, and did the whole thing just like him and stuff. Like, I just thought. I, but then, as I got older, I started rapping my own little mm-hmm. way and stuff like that. So yeah. So you, I know you got a, a verse somewhere and somewhere we can find. No, huh? no, nah, nah, <laughs> you ain't you ain't gonna see nothing. I never recorded anything, man. Yeah. <laughs> now, like you know, with basketball, we we know if you a hooper or you in the sports, you work out, you work on your craft, you in the gym, you got a trainer, mm-hmm. you put shots up. How do you get yourself better in your craft? Like, how do do you watch other people? Do you talk to yourself as far as interviews? Like, how do you get yourself buried at your crib? Um, well, I interview, like, people that's around me. So, mm-hmm. like, I practice with my wife a lot. Mm-hmm. So, um, I do that. I do watch um, a lot of interviews online. Mm-hmm. Um, and then just different setups for interviews as well. Like, I'm on YouTube. Like crazy, you know, yeah, like yeah. on your phone, how <laughs> you know it tells you how many hours you spent yeah. on there. Mm-hmm. Mine's probably gonna be twenty four hours because I'm mm-hmm. always looking at something. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, now um, I know we, I'm gonna go back a little bit as far as growing up. Was it ever like something you dreamed of being that you just shut down at, after a certain age? Because I know with me, it was like always the NBA. Mm-hmm. I'm five eight, so you know. <laughs> that dream was so, yeah. A- so it's like my first year in high school, I was five two. I was small, like I was real small, and I went from five two to five eight. I'm like, oh, I'm gonna be six one. I'm gonna right. be a point guard. I'm gonna be in the NBA. 
And you stuck. I'm still five. Right. Eight. You stuck. I still wear <laughs> size now. Like, was there anything like you had a dream of being? Then you like at the surface, like you know what? This mm-hmm. ain't gonna work. As far as like a creative or just anything. Period. period. Um. Well, I know that. Um. Yeah, coming out of high school, when I first started college, I wanted to uh, do nursing. Okay. Yeah, and then that switched over to social work. Okay. So, that's about it. Yeah. Have you ever did, like, have your mom ever pressured you, like, as far as, like, you need to do this, you need to do that? Like, have you ever tried to just please your parent? No. 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 No, my mom, if you ask my mom, she think I'm the perfect child. (laughs) Everything I do, you know, she proud of. Now, with y'all having a kid, like, would you, like, pressure, you know, do you know what you guys are having? Oh uh, yeah, yeah. I can't say. Okay. We're keeping it secret. Okay, right now. cool, cool. That, <laughs> would you put pressure on them, or you would just let them do whatever? Let them do whatever. We were actually talking about this um, mm-hmm. yesterday, and we were just basically saying like we'll have them try like a lot of different things, mm-hmm. and they could just choose whether or not like you yeah. know I don't want to do this anymore. Yeah. Oh yeah, I like this. So. Yeah, cause my son. I, I love basketball. Like I watch basketball day in and day out. Like mm-hmm. I love it. I would love for one of my sons to make it big in basketball. But one day I had to ask my son, like, are you doing this for you or are you doing this for me? Because right. I don't want you to do it for me. Because if you do it for me, then you gonna hate it. Right. Like it's gonna be like a job for you. So like, is this something you want to do? If it's something you want to do, then we gonna go a hundred at it. Like, yeah, I love it. I want to do this too. Mm-hmm. So that's like, and I'm man, I'm so happy. Like God damn, hell yeah! <laughs> like, I was hoping it's like fuck basketball. Right, right. <laughs> but but. I do see that my son has another side to him that's pretty good. Now I'm mm-hmm. pushing him. He can draw real good. Okay. So I'm like, dog, you got to keep drawing. Because this basketball thing, you might be stuck like me and be 5'8". Mm-hmm. And you got to be strong, fast. So you got to go ahead and see the second talent you got as far as drawing and, and, and draw every day. Yeah. Like, I ain't had nobody tell me to do nothing else every day. Yeah. And I was, you know, that's something, too. Like, when I was saying how I wish I was doing, like, the videography and photography, like, yeah. when I was young. Like, yeah. I wish I had found that this was something I really liked yeah. at a younger age. Like yeah. I said, I feel like my development would be further along. Oh, yeah, for is, sure, for you sure. Know? So. Yeah, because you and my man, how old are you? 28. Okay, okay, mm-hmm. okay. Yeah, yeah, but a lot of times, I mean, you still young. Yeah. I mean, I'm 33. God no, damn, I'm I feel- <laughs> <laughs> no, I feel like I ain't got too much more learning left in me, man. No. Man, 33. But then, like, I listen to this dude, and they, I don't know if you follow him, Gary V. Nope. Oh, you got to follow him. Like, but he like, you never, with the with the age we in now, with the phones, you never too old to, you know, try some stuff. Like, as far as even this podcast, like, my uncle, like, I've been talking about this for three years. Yeah. Like, i seen him doing it. He probably the first person I've seen do anything close to podcasts back in 2011. Yeah. Like, I always talk about doing it, but I just never did it. And low key, the Nipsey Hustle death is what fueled me to do everything I'm doing right now because he was 32, 33 and looked at as a god mm-hmm. where he was from. You know he doing he 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 brought his whole little community and it might be the reason why he passed away but you know say he did everything he 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 could do and everybody looked up to him and he was only thirty three when he passed right, away yeah so that's that's, just, it, that's always just crazy to me like I ain't afraid of like death or anything like that but when you think <laughs> about it like life is just so fragile when you could just be gone mm-hmm. you know what I mean in like a second oh so. yeah for sure I I talk I think about that all the time. Like for some reason, even with that Kobe situation, like that's what made me do the whole salute me because you know what I'm saying you never want to go out and not even like you know tell people how much you appreciate them and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Like even my girl, like I don't like leave my house like you know without giving her a hug and stuff like that because you right. shit it'd be your last time. You know what I'm saying you never know. Like mm-hmm. I lost both parents, I lost grandparents, I don't have you know parents or grandparents. So that time with your people is like is. <laughs> it might be last time, yeah, for real. So yeah. you don't want to go out on no on no bitterness or nothing like that. You feel me? So, mm-hmm. so as far as like um, getting back before, cause I'm gonna transition. I don't want to keep you here for 15 hours or still. <laughs> but like <laughs> with podcasts, like you do interviews. Have you ever thought about having like your own podcast? Uh, yes, I have actually. Mm-hmm. I'm a, I'm a I'm a talker, really. Like I'm a random talker. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. A little about a lot of stuff. Okay. And I research the most random stuff. <laughs> like if it's something uh, somebody saying, I'm like, what's the random? What's the randomest look thing you 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 look you looked up on your phone? Oh, um. I asked that because you know what? <laughs> everybody, everybody. I know your relationship. I'm a relationship. Everybody looked up some crazy porn. That's why I asked that. And the yeah, crazy porn, the crazy porn I ever looked up was like midget porn, like oh, midget Lord. porn. I, like you've been having bored of looking up handicap <laughs> like, <laughs> like sometimes we look at we look at random stuff. Like yeah. what's the random stuff you looked up? I mean I look up I look up all types of stuff, like disgusting <laughs> stuff, like on um, different um 
diseases and <laughs> yeah. things like that. So I know um, you really look at the dang coronavirus. Oh, like. yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I look up stuff like if I don't know something, like back to what you was talking about as far as like porn, yeah. not porn, yeah. <laughs> but on stuff like, uh, <laughs> you know, like where something is exactly at on the yeah. body, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. So crazy. I look, I looked at a 10 minute video of people busting like pimples. Oh, mm -mm. Like I'm That's weird. Disgusting. Yeah, yeah, like the stuff like that, like uh, black hairs on your nose. Like, it, it's some crazy <laughs> stuff. Like, I'm, one, I'm one of them ones, if I see, like, something that's too repetitive, like yeah. a whole bunch of dots or something, like, it just makes me itch. I, I don't want to look at nothing like that. <laughs> like, then, like, I remember being a little kid, like, 12, I'm looking at dang on animals having sex, like, mm -hmm. God damn, that giraffe <laughs> <laughs> went to work. Like, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a weirdo. I don't I ain't lie. <laughs> now, <if we> go back, <laughs> going back to the podcast, like, if you did do a podcast, would it be like a one-on-one -on -one thing, or would you like it to be like um, an everyday thing? Where you got the same two co-hosts or one co-host or or interview type? Because with me, I had two people that I had in mind as far as doing the whole podcast setting with. But then, as they kept on procrastinating and bull crap, mm -hmm. I'm like, you know what? I just turned to a one-on-one -on -one thing because if we build off each other, my followers can go up, they followers can go up. Right, right, right. So right. like, how would you want to have your podcast? Like, I mean, for me. Um it, I don't think it would matter like if it was because I'm already doing like one-on-one -on -one interviews so if I did a one-on-one -on -one podcast it would yeah. be perfectly fine um, yeah. but I, I would probably refer to um, have a partner in those situations because I like to um, have different ideas being bounced and not always yeah. just you. me and yeah, my yeah, opinion yeah. you know what yeah. I'm saying so and then um, definitely having guests on different guests and stuff like that yeah so it can be kind of a group Discussion, yeah. yeah. And cause even with me and music, I started off doing music um with my homeboy and stuff like that, and it was cool. Like you ain't got to write as much. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you ain't got to write your sixteen. That's it, and mm -hmm. think of a hook or whatever. But once he got locked up, it started making me like have to do more and stuff like that. Yeah, and and it helps too, cause like you don't want something all on you. You know yeah. what I mean? So a lot of times when you got a partner, yeah. you know. While they talking, you think of your next question, yeah, you know, yeah. something like exactly, that. Exactly, so. yeah. So it makes it so much easier. Yeah. Like, <laughs> even like, if as far as me with coaching, I'm coaching with my fiance cousin, and she's just like incredible. Like, I'm like, all right, I gotta go ahead because her energy is so live. Mm -hmm. I gotta match her energy and stuff like that, or make sure I'm I'm I'm, I'm with her. Like, because right, sometimes right. I look at her like I'm the kid. Like, damn, you cold. <laughs> <laughs> So it's like like the last time at the practice, she was like, "Oh, you that was a good drill you did." I felt good, like mm -hmm. hell yeah, I did that. Right, I did that. Right. <laughs> but yeah, having that partner is always even with relationships. And this is a, a great, you know, what I'm saying transition to my next question is like you say your your girlfriend, your wife, and stuff. And of course, you are a female. Mm -hmm. So when did you realize like not trying to be rude, but when did you realize like you know what I, I, I'm I'm attracted to females and not males? <laughs> I, I have to say, actually, when I was eleven, eleven, eleven years old, okay. yeah, my um. My cousin, she also likes females, but she showed me this um, this show. You may not know of it, but it's called The L Word. She showed me this show. Okay. And, you know, it's basically about lesbians, you know, mm -hmm. in a relationship and the drama they're going through and stuff like that. Like, okay. when she first showed me, I'm 11. I'm like, ugh, you know, what the yeah. is this? But <laughs> secretly, I'm like, okay, you know, at yeah. 11, like, that looks kind of good to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Whatever, but I didn't really... Um, do anything till I probably was about 14. That was when I had my first girlfriend and okay. it kind of like solidified it. Okay. Me, so. so, so never had a boyfriend? Yes, I have. Yeah. So, so huh, before you, was it because like you say, 11, you kind of felt that way. Was it like pressure to be with a dude like from like, you thought like it's the right thing to do? No, well, no, I, I wanted mm -hmm. to, for me, I wanted to be sure. Mm -hmm. So like, even after I had my first girlfriend at 14, I had, two boyfriends after that okay you know because um that was like my first yeah yeah, yeah so yeah. i just wanted to you know be sure i had See, never yeah. been with a guy before yeah. whatsoever so yeah. um but they just they didn't last long so i think i had <laughs> one for like two months mm -hmm. and i had one for a week yeah. and that was it <laughs> you know what that's why you're good that's funny you say that to that go on the topic because um have you heard about the whole d wade thing with his son Yes. Yeah. Now you said that you at eleven you start thinking about you know saying girls or whatever because of something you seen and mm -hmm. then you went to go see and maybe that was just thing. Let me right, see how right. boys are. Now with D Way, I was looking at some stuff as far as with his son. Now I'll never have no problem with anything anybody do. Whatever somebody like that's that's their preference. Mm -hmm. I don't give a damn. Like it ain't hurting me. Mm -hmm. Whatever you do is that's your life. I'm 
I'm not never judging nobody. But by him going ahead and, you know what I'm saying, calling his son she, her, mm -hmm. and stuff like that, do you think he's too young at 12 to know what, the, what he really want? I don't think so. I mean, I have seen instances of, you know, people in the transgender community who have transitioned mm -hmm. and then later they, like, they regret it and they yeah. want to transition back. And that yeah. may happen for him. But yeah. in this moment, yeah. and just like you said, mm -hmm. when you, you know, you hug your wife and stuff like that because, you know, you, you kind of in the moment, you don't know what the next moment is going to yeah. be. They may be exactly. gone. In this moment, that's how he's feeling. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's That's what he feels as him and and i think that wade is is respecting that yeah. you know what i mean because people say it's so much stuff like i said in the day i i didn't grow up i i've been i know what i like so i never gave a damn about what anybody else mm -hmm. like like that's what you like like i'm not here to judge nobody and like i i, I have a gay uncle god rest his soul gay auntie god rest her soul so i didn't seen that at a young age like at a certain age i'm like hold on that's not just Mm -hmm. Uncle Junior friend no more like right, right. <laughs> like I'm old enough to, like this, this is more than a friendship because like 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 for real for real so like I never gave a damn and with the whole D Wade thing that even made me talk to my son because maybe I don't want my son to ever feel like he can't talk to me about something because mm -hmm. I'm a judge and I'm gonna go crazy on them at a young age yes I was immature and I would be like you know what hell no that's not happening but at an older age and me going through things. Sometimes you can't, you can't, I can't beat my son to be what he, you know, what mm -hmm. I want him to be. Go back to the basketball thing. So I asked him, like, you know, did, like, are you sure you like, like, I, I'm like, I don't know how I asked you this, but like, you, you like females or you, like, if you uh, ever he had to question yourself, at you. he yeah, at you he did. Like <laughs> but I'm like, I'm like, the only reason I asked you is because I don't ever want you to be right, uncomfortable. Right, right. Even with the girl thing, when you, when you want to know about sex, even though I know we need to have this conversation, talk to me. Yeah. I'm your, like, I'm your dad, but I also want to be somebody you can feel comfortable right. talking to you feel me i think you probably would have noticed yeah you know I, yeah, what yeah. i mean so i want to make sure <laughs> <laughs> that's why you probably like what you he looked at me like asking me did you crazy like because yeah. like my mom when i told my mom i was uh the 10th grade and yeah. she was like basically she already knew and she was waiting yeah. for me to tell her you know yeah, what yeah. i mean because so. like i said me going through your pictures i'll, I'll do what you do <laughs> i look i see sometimes you got the you know Switch what I'm saying? you got the muscles out <laughs> Got the jeans yeah. on. Sometimes you got the heels on. Like, do you do that for your comfort? You do it like to show, like, hey, I can do this. I can do that. You know what? When I um, <laughs> when I graduated um, high school is when I actually transitioned into wearing like um, boy clothes and stuff yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. And I actually dressed like that mm -hmm. until about one or two years ago. Yep, yeah, one or two years ago. Okay. Yep. And then I switched it back. And and um, the reason why I dressed like that is because I do. I did feel comfortable in it. I did like how I looked in. I yeah, thought I was looking was sweet. Yeah, I was like, looking <laughs> sweet and stuff. <laughs> um, but then, you know, I just had this kind of revelation of like, I want I want to feel different. I want to feel sexy now, mm -hmm. you know. So, mm -hmm. and then, I mean, just the perk of it that I can look yeah. good in both, really. Yeah, so. yeah. That's what's up. Because I, 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 I'm, I'm not trying to be stupid and then I like, ask this question and stuff like that, but... Like, I always wondered, like, as far as, like, males and females. So, you know, you attracted to, to women and stuff. A lot of times, I see your, 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 your wife, she look like a woman. Mm -hmm. A lot of times when females are attracted to another woman, they look just like a dude. Okay. So, I always wonder, like, not trying to sound stupid, <laughs> like, if you if you attracted to a woman and look like, 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 like a guy, mm -hmm. why not be with a guy? No, no, no. I, see, see, yeah, I mean, you get that question. Educate I mean, me. Yeah, we get that question all the time, but you got to understand, like, what's underneath that. I mean, yeah. they still got boobs. They still got a vagina yeah. and stuff yeah. like that. Like, yeah. you may see the the most uh, manly looking woman, but in the bed, you yeah. know, yeah. she may be telling something totally different. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, there are some females that do dress like men and they radiate that kind of like. You know, I'm a man. They may act like that. They may yeah. feel like that too. Yeah, but yeah. no, yeah, I yeah. think that still they still women underneath. Yeah, you know, yeah. I just so. want to know. And then, like, okay, now this is a second part to that question. Um, uh, without throwing this girl under the bus, uh, I was supposed to have her on the show. Now, if like I said, I'm not trying to educate me. Like I said, she has she had a girlfriend, but the girlfriend transitioned to a dude, mm -hmm. and she always shout this person out as her husband. What is the difference? If this dude did the whole uh, sex change and surgery and stuff, like you with this person, you consider him a husband. Why did you make this transition to to that? If you still basically with this with mm -hmm. a guy, I think you know too. In this day and age, like in the the age that we're in, 
people are just getting with people for who they are, whether they're a man or a woman. Yeah, yeah, so I think yeah. in that situation, you know, she loves this person mm -hmm. for this person. You know, their yeah. personality, whether they transition to a, a woman or to a man. So, and for them, it doesn't make any difference because that person to them is still the same. Yeah, you yeah, know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, yeah, oh yeah. So. You're good. You answer questions good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you guys have a question good. That's how I felt comfortable to ask you. Like, you know what? Yeah. Guy people come on and then I'm asking my fiance, like, should I ask this question? Like, I don't want her to be like. But you know what? I mean, I just be, a lot of people have those questions. Yeah, though. but be too afraid to ask because yeah. I don't want to. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's like the whole black and white thing. Like, when they ask, like, how do you feel to be black? Like, <laughs> motherfucker, you want to know. <laughs> right, right. You know what I'm saying? So, that's, yeah, that's crazy. So, um, you said you always knew what you wanted and stuff. Basically, uh, you had that little stint. You was like, you know what? Dudes ain't shit. <laughs> God, no. <laughs> you know, you know the, the, the guys that I did date, they were actually very nice. Okay. Very nice guys. So. And they respected me when I told them, like, Cause I told him like, you know, I like girls. Yeah. You know what I mean? It ain't you, it's me. Yeah. <laughs> you know? <So. laughs> now, um, I know, like I said, um, you, you, you got a wife and stuff like that, whatever. Uh, you're a pretty girl. Do you have like dudes getting your DM like that? I know you got what up, dog. You know, I can, yeah, I can the, change that. Like, I'm about to say, the, the photo I just posted last night. Every time I post a photo, yeah. you know what I mean? I get people my DMs <laughs> saying something. <laughs> I mean, when we went to go get pregnant, too, we had, you know, people in our DMs talking about something, you know, they donate the sperm for us and stuff yeah. like that. I'm just yeah. like, yeah. yeah. That's another thing. Like, I was talking. I was talking about before. It's like as far as I seen. I seen that you post that stuff. Like, how do that go? Y'all get a, sur a surrogate and somebody that you know, or somebody that's no. Willing? So you can get someone that you know, but we we went through a sperm bank. Okay. Yeah. So okay. I mean, it's just a website. I yeah. mean, it sounds you know kind of yeah. a little weird because you just it's like shopping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So you just <laughs> go through a website and they have like the photos of the um, different guys that's on there, okay. and then you just kind of choose which one best fits. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So y'all look like, oh, light skin guy with some good right, eyes. Right, right, right. <laughs> well, you know, we... <laughs> and I'll be sure it's over there. Right, right, yeah. We actually went with dark skin, so... Okay. Yeah. That's what's up. So, are, all right, see, that's um, building off and stuff. Like, are you are you worried about um, the kid as they grow up and they say they have two moms? Are you worried about that? Because I ask that because I have um, the, the person I do I coach with, that's my fiance cousin, and she's in a relationship with a with a female and she already had a kid already and stuff like that so i'm quite sure they both take them to school and stuff are you worried about um you know anything like as far as like the other kids picking on them and stuff like that and would you give them that conversation early on like listen this how it is this mm -hmm. what you should expect to get you know what I'm saying growing up right um a little bit yes i mean all these conversations we've had yeah, you know yeah, what i'm saying yeah, I'm um, quite sure. i think in, you know in that situation because the child was already made before mm -hmm. the relationship mm -hmm. there needs to there probably is more talking there because yeah. it's a change for the child yeah, yeah whereas yeah, for yeah. us when we have our child that's all they're gonna know yeah, exactly. you know what i mean until they go to school and they see that oh you know they have a mom and a dad and stuff yeah. like that um, yeah. but yeah we were um talking and um we would like to have that conversation like early on maybe about around six or so mm -hmm. especially once they start school because that's when they're gonna like really see yeah, you know kids is. can be a, a you cruel. know kids yeah, can be cruel yeah. especially with this day and age of social media yeah, like definitely. you know what i'm saying so yeah, yeah so y'all gonna get that talk out the way early. yeah yeah i mean i'm not too worried about it because like i said in this day and age like you're gonna see more and more you know couples in the lgbt community with mm -hmm. kids you know yeah. it may be when our child goes to school it's about four or five of them in there yeah. they got two moms or two yeah. dads or whatever oh so. yeah for sure what up, y'all? It's your man, King Crooked. You already know. You see this in my hand? These are the plugs, you know what I mean? Some of the finest quality earplugs that you can purchase. You can go and get them at gettheplugs.com. Gettheplugs.com. Don't run off on the plugs like plies, you know what I'm saying? Go get the plugs at gettheplugs.com, all right? Peace. A situation my uncle came up to my school and um 
my mom owed me some senior dues, so my uncle came up there. My uncle gay. Uh, everybody know it. All my homies know it. Mm -hmm. But you never knew it until you seen his boyfriend. But this one particular day, he wanted to come to my school with the smallest shorts, <laughs> the biggest fanny pack, and fishnet holes basketball uh, a jersey. I'm like, oh, my God. Come on, join your bro. So he came in that mud, and everybody's like, who is that? And I'm like. I don't know. <laughs> like, I don't know. I don't know who the hell that dude is. Like, right. And that's the only time. Like, but any like at, a, at an early age, my me and my mom a go. She's like, oh yeah, Junior having the um, party. I'm like, oh, this gonna be some good food. Let's go. Mm -hmm. Like, I know who, what I like, so I never been like. Mm -hmm. Some people be afraid to be around that. Like, if you afraid yeah. to be around that, then you got to question yourself. Right, right. Like, like <laughs> what you afraid of, bro? Like, <laughs> like you know what you like. I'm just there. I'm enjoying some food. They play some good music. Right. I'm chilling. My mama this is my uncle. We just chilling. Like. <laughs> Do you ever feel like you gotta like justify you know, yourself or whatever like that? No, I I, I, I mean to certain people, mm -hmm. you know, because they have their own you know type of beliefs, but not really. No, I mean I'm comfortable with who I am. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So and whoever got something to say about that, you yeah. know, it really doesn't matter to me. Oh yeah, I got I got two more questions. I'm not trying to stick on this, but mm -hmm. do um do you feel like it's easier for a man a woman to come out than a man? Definitely. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, because in in this society, you know, um, they have certain expectations on a man. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, a man yeah. gotta be strong, yeah. and, you know, be the protector and stuff like that. Uh -huh. So when they think about a gay man, they think of him as weak. You yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. But in reality, a, a gay man will knock your ass off. I, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I ain't trying. That's the last thing I'm trying to get caught on YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> My ass not talking about. Yeah, they definitely feel like they gotta they gotta hide more than a woman because like um, people fantasize about two women together you know yeah, what i mean yeah, they romanticize yeah, yeah. that and stuff so yeah. yeah 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 for sure for sure and then like see the thing about it, like i knew um a couple chicks that just like they like you say you knew at a young age but some chicks just tried it just because they felt like all right i'm getting hurt by this dude so much let me see how a woman is mm -hmm. i call that fake gay like you know just or fake whatever like you it's know, fake to me because i i know a girl she was in a relationship with a girl for uh a hot second mm -hmm. just because she thought it was going to be different but that same girl was doing the same thing her right, right. ex was doing she right. went right back to the dude like. yeah and I was going to uh, say <laughs> something too you know about you know is it easier I think they both have their challenges because like even with females like you know a lot of times people don't want to take you serious or man don't want to take you serious like you know hey this is my wife yeah. then they want to try to be like oh you know what well, I can get up in on that like no that's yeah. not the type of relationship yeah, yeah, that yeah, we in sure. you yeah, know yeah. what I'm saying yeah, yeah, you got respected though at the end yeah. of the day. Now I see it, you you do have a brother. That's yeah. it, like no sisters, no brothers, just one brother. Just one brother, yeah. Now how do you feel as far as like you um you being um um in a relationship with a woman like or he already knew or off the road? Yeah, he I mean he already knew because I've actually been with her since I was eighteen. Okay. So we going on our ten years here, and he only twenty three, so <laughs> yeah, he, was, a, he was pretty young. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But yeah, he loved her. I mean, okay. he called her sis and all of that, yeah. you know. Um, and he also um has like gay friends stuff like that yeah, so yeah, yeah. I mean, he kind of feels like me he he really doesn't care about what your sexuality is or anything yeah. like that he care more about the person so. yeah hell yeah. at the end of the day that's all it, that's all it is like yeah. come here i asked one dude like if it's um i asked my cousin like if his homeboy came out to him like at, at the certain point like hey i'm gay mm -hmm. like how would you treat that person I, I asked myself that i never i don't know because mm -hmm. i never had that happen but I mean, it depends on how long we've been rocking, but it's like, if you ask me a question about another dude, I don't know how, I don't know what to say. Like, yeah. hey man, be, uh, be a better dude. <laughs> I don't know what to say. So it's like, it's like, but at the end of the day, like, I've always been that type of person. I've been open to whatever, like, you know what I'm saying? Hey, what you like, what you like. I can't judge nobody. I can't tell you yeah. what you should if, like. If it ain't hurting nobody else, so why shouldn't by be By you being young, I could see that you wasn't afraid to let people know, like, this is why this was no. this is why I am and this is why I like. Yeah, especially too, like I said, when I um got out of high school, I was dressing in men's clothing, so then yeah. you know, mm -hmm. people automatically be like, oh, you know, she like girls yeah. or she swing that way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but one thing I didn't say about, about um females that swing that way, y'all be dressing sweet as hell. <laughs> <laughs> we, got, we got the style. Y'all be killing us, man. You like, know why? What up? We can wear little kids' clothes. It's oh, cheap. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> man. Cheap, man. I'm telling you. Now, we, we talking about marriage. And I told you I'm about to get married and stuff. When did you uh, When did you decide, like, oh, yeah, she the one? <laughs> Probably our first year. <laughs> what, 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 what she do? Like, damn. This is, you know, she stuck with me through through some times. Okay. So, yeah. you know, and I think that that kind of uh, 
solidified it. Like she really gonna be there through it all. That's same thing with me. Like my fiance, I'm like I'm broke as hell right now. <laughs> I'm making about four hundred dollars yeah. a week. <laughs> right. I mean, yeah. I mean, we grew up together too. Like I said, we met in our senior year in high school, so okay. we learned a lot from each other. Experienced a lot together. Like I have. Mm-hmm. Most of my first with yeah. her, you know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. So. That's what's up. And I know she not, you know, on the mic or whatever, but like, I would ask, like, what is, I could ask you that, what is too long to wait? Like, y'all was there for a while. So, did she start giving you, like, little hints, like, uh, I'm tired <laughs> of being a girlfriend, like, or oh, right. like, what's up, what's up, what's good? Like, well, yeah, a hint, because she asked if we can go look at rings. Yeah. <laughs> but I think, what was it? Would it have been eight years in? No. Was that, like, seven years in? We looked at rings. Yeah. We thought we were going to get married sooner. <laughs> right. Right. And then we, you know, yeah, you had some to... couples therapy, worked through some things. Yeah. And then we were stronger and yeah. felt ready for it. Yeah. Okay. That's what's up. Yeah. Oh, damn, damn, damn. So with me, with me I started getting those saying things like, let's go get a ring size. Mm-hmm. And stuff like that. I'm like, I got to do this. <laughs> we was together for five years and like, at, at a point, like, I ain't, you know, back in the day and stuff, like, with old relationships, I was, like, still, like, seeing, like, what this girl was about, what that girl was about. But in this relationship, like, I was telling my aunt last night, like, I haven't taught or did anything with no mm-hmm. other chick, just been her. So, it gotta be something, like, for me not to, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, it's like, once I got that ring, it's like, all right, I gotta do this and stuff yeah. like that. Like, so, did you feel pressure? Like, I got, not, not pressure, but, like, all right, it's time. I gotta do this. I don't want to lose her. Like, no, no. I think that we was pretty much on the same page okay. when, we, when we went to go. Like I said, we've been through so much, and, like, we didn't hurt her over a lot of things. Mm-hmm. And I think that was really what kind of said, like, she gonna be here. Yeah. You know, yeah, for whatever, through yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. and like, she said, couples therapy, like that's the thing. Like, do you think like mm-hmm. therapy is needed for relationships? Like, to go ahead, like definitely, and, and, yeah. Because sometimes you could be like, is you with this person for the convenience? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Or is you with this person because, like you said, y'all been knowing each other, each other since y'all was right seventeen, right? Like, am I just like, all right, I'm comfortable with this person? Right? Like, Are you scared to be alone? Yeah. You know what I mean? Or you truly want to be with them? So, yeah. I definitely feel like couples therapy. I would suggest it to. Um, a lot of people to, mm-hmm. to everybody really yeah. you know what I mean because a lot of times we get with people just because you comfortable with that mm-hmm. person like you know that person can do this and do that like I, I ain't know people I ain't naming no names but you know they've been locked up and they talk to a chick and they that's the only chick they talking to is they promising them everything like girl I love you <laughs> like of course you love her you ain't seen a Donald Craig Harold like <laughs> you ain't seen nobody else so you love her and then you get out and be like Hey, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm creeping around and stuff, so yeah. I'm about to say, yeah, you know, you definitely want to make sure that you you deal with those type of temptations because, uh-huh. you know, I'm the type of person, like, like me and her, we're not, um, we could say to each other, like, oh, you know, like, she's sexy or whatever yeah, like that and things yeah. like that, but we we have that trust that, you know, yeah. ain't nothing going to go See, be on beyond that. I'll be too scared. scared. Like, damn, she got a big ass. No, nah, <laughs> no. Nah, I mean, we do oh, all oh, types so of stuff. so you like that ass. Go yeah. <laughs> I say yeah, we do. I mean, we dance with you know other people at the club. Yeah. You know, it's just it's that trust factor there. So. Uh, no, and what if a dude come up like, oh hey, what's up <laughs> to your wife and your dad? <laughs> nah, okay, that's different. That's that's different because I ain't trying to say nothing. But guys, a lot of times they always try to get like sexual with you and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, if yeah. I can see that you can respect it, yeah. then okay. Because okay. we have, I think um, when we first started dating, um, we did go out to the club once and she danced with the guy and it was all good. Mm-hmm. But if they get the feeling and touching and, yeah. you know, humping on her from yeah. the back, then it's just like, come on. Have you had to, have you, <laughs> have you had to throw hands before? No. <laughs> no, 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 I ain't had to throw hands. Like nah, she, she almost threw some hands. She crazy. Man. <laughs> she almost she threw some looking hands. Like, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I mess up everybody in this bedroom right now. <laughs> that's crazy. Like, but that's, that's cool though. Y'all can go out and you know what I'm saying and kick it together yeah. and stuff like that. Like, but that's that's one thing. Like, people always say like, I know dudes always say like they want that whole uh, 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 girl on girl action and stuff. The only way I can see that me me being in that is if I'm not in a relationship with nobody with nobody if, if, if it's me and my fiance and then I got Tanya coming in and then I'm at work I come home and her and Tanya in the bed like right. oh, oh I feel some type of way now like so you basically tell me I ain't good enough Tanya right, the right, right. <laughs> that's crazy you definitely want to do with nobody that you know it could be like a one thing yeah that's it that yeah 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 yeah. cause I know T-Pain I was looking at uh, his interviews he was saying like him and his wife uh, have girls come in but his wife got picked the girls mm-hmm. he can't 
Cause then it started looking like something else. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, what's some um, what's some what's some twenty twenty uh, what's some goals you want to get done um before the end of this year as far as your business, yourself, your relationship, mm-hmm. whatever. Well, I mean, I definitely want to grow the business more. I want to um. Uh, make it e- even more professional. So mm-hmm. like I said, I'm drawing up contracts, okay. um, getting like the uh, new criteria for how we solicit artists and, mm-hmm. you know, interview artists on the page. Okay. Um, definitely want to be able to grow like my subscribers and views and stuff in 22. Like I, I set little goals for myself. So okay. like I told myself by the end of the first week in March, I want to get to 200, yeah. you know, followers on Instagram. Yeah. Now I'm at 209. I'm like, all yeah, right, I, I didn't get it. Yeah. I, too. I'm like, yeah. my, I just started my, um, my IG with the, with the podcast page. Mm-hmm. When I got 200, I felt good. Yeah. Myself, right? yeah. yeah. That's what's up. <laughs> so yeah, definitely that, um, do more like, um, artists, um, showcases and stuff like that. Cause I feel like that helps me to, um, like conquer some of my fears with mm-hmm. interviewing, you know, yeah. just the more that I do it and stuff. Now, when you see somebody that you, that you, uh, vibing with or whatever you, or you want to get on the show, like, how's that approach? Like, do you got a business card? Do you tell them about your, your platform? Like, Well, I have, a, a um like, a statement already written out, you okay. know, that I'll send to them. And then I'll add, like, um, um a little more content in there to kind of personalize it to that person. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. I don't have, we don't have any business cards yet. It is something that we want to get to. Yeah. Um, we want it to build, like, a website okay. um, and stuff like that as well. Okay, so, okay. Mm-hmm. And then what's some, what's, some, what's some goals that you got that's, like, something new, like, that you might want to venture into? Like it's me, I got some stuff like as far as like he got this camera and stuff and like this new this new equipment. So I'm about to start writing like little short ten ten minute film. Mm-hmm. I got this one little film I'm about to start writing. I ain't write I ain't started the script. It's called mm-hmm. uh, it's called Dog. Mm-hmm. I'm about to get married. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but the, I ain't gonna go farther into it. Y'all gonna see it. It's gonna be so I'm gonna send it to you. Everything it's gonna be funny. It's like yeah. a little it's like a little funny thing, like me trying to get my last moments in before I get married. And yeah. Stuff. But, so funny you say that is definitely film. Okay. I see a lot of, you know, um, um, low budget films in Detroit that people make. And I've been to a few. Yeah. And when I watch them, of course, I, you know, I'm like the person outside looking in. I'm like, man, you know, that audio could be better if, mm-hmm. if they did this or they did that. So that's something that I'll definitely like to um, yeah. venture into is that. And then as well um, as clothing. Okay. So um, I have always wanted to start in my own clothing line and stuff like mm-hmm. that. So do you want it for like just strictly women or male and women or like male and women? Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. That's what's yep, up. Yep. You want to give his name or you want to keep that on the, on, on, on the little hush right now? You can keep it under, under hush. <laughs> okay. Under hush. Yeah, under hush. Cool. It, cool. it, it may be, you know, under my so so name but yeah. yeah okay okay Maybe. when did you get the name so so like, how did you get that like, I wanna, cause you like when I ask your name I'm like so so alright right so so you know I actually just got my license plate too it says so so Detroit on the back so when you, you know, see that that's me thinking, you know you know what I'm thinking about Jermaine Dupri so, <laughs> so, you know? <laughs> it ain't from him it yeah, ain't from yeah, yeah. him so it's actually an acronym okay I can, like I said I came up with it in 2015 I was just thinking of a name to go by okay. you know you gotta yeah, have a name to go yeah, by you yeah, don't wanna yeah. always give people your real name yeah, and stuff yeah. like that so um, and then like I said I was thinking of a brand that um, that suits me uh-huh. so 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 stands for stand out show out okay and it's basically like whoever you are um, regardless of who you are um be you and don't yeah. care about what others oh, yeah, for sure. think of that you know what yeah, I mean yeah, yeah, yeah. so that's basically yeah. what it now is. with your um your social production like do you do a lot of videos or are you is this something you trying to do more of or do more of so yeah. I, I haven't been doing a lot of uh music videos and stuff like that I mean I have a few on my um YouTube channel but I definitely like to do more of those um I'm actually venturing out into doing like um wedding videography and okay. stuff like that as yeah, well yeah, yeah. so you'll see more of that too that's what's up that's what's up yep. that's what's up okay yep, okay yep. cool cool now like I said we getting towards the uh the end of the show and stuff so I got this thing called top three so I asked your top three you know what I'm saying different categories so uh give me your top three rappers top three rappers I would say is um Let's say Joyner Lucas. Okay. You know, um, I like Roddy Rich. Okay. And Drake. Okay. Drake, Drake. Everybody say Drake. But my <laughs> thing is like this. Do you, um, do you put him up there even though it's been the rumors of people writing for him? 
Yep, I still do. Yeah, yeah. You wanna know why? Yeah. I like Drake as a. I mean, I don't know him personally from what I see. Mm-hmm. You know, I like him as a person, especially yeah. after he did that one video where he was just passing out. Oh, he yeah, passed out yeah. the whole budget, yeah. the whole budget to people on the street. Like, yeah. come on, if everybody did that, that'd yeah. be what's up. Uh, Drake Cole, Drake Cole. <laughs> I, I like Drake, like especially like his whole the way he do things. But I just want one. I know he gonna never listen to me. <laughs> I just want one album with just straight rap. Just I, 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 I like his singing. He, he, he come out with some stuff for the women and stuff. But I want to just see what he do. I, I had the same thing for Andre 3000. Like, mm-hmm. If I can get like a straight rap album from those two dudes, I'd be happy. Yeah. Cause they both like, they both dope artists. <laughs> Give me your top three Detroit artists. Male, I mean, uh, male, female, rapper, singer. Detroit artist. Um, I'll say... Like I said, I like Ice War Vezo. Mm-hmm. Sada Baby okay. and um, Nisha Nache. I like her. Okay, okay, yeah. yeah. She dope. I see you did a little piece with her. And stuff. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, she dope. I'm, I got to get her on the show. Come on. Come on, come on. <laughs> <She's> <laughs> Let me get uh, top three singers. Singer, singer, singer. You, you old school, so I know it's going to be all old Not, school. Yeah, I am old school. <laughs> um, let's go with. I like Cisco. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was actually listening to that last night. Uh, <laughs> um, that was a good group, though. Drew Hill was pretty dope, though. I ain't gonna lie. There's a meeting in my bedroom. Is that dope? I like Tyrese. Dope. Tyrese, Tyrese is actually is my middle cold. name, by the way. Oh, Tyrese? Tyrese. No, Tyrese is cold. Like, his CDs is cold. Like. Yeah. And uh, we'll go with Beyonce. We'll say yeah. Beyonce. Tyrese is cold as hell. <laughs> all right, all right, oh, all right. We talking about R&B. I want to know something. Um... When um, being uh, you in a relationship with making love, do you gotta have music on or just like complete silence? <laughs> music. <laughs> I never had now, music. if we if we if we like a little drunk or something like yeah. that, it's you like, don't need nothing. Well, I mean, just kind of yeah. going for <laughs> it. <laughs> but yeah, it, it's music. That that awkward silence. Yeah. Yeah. Now with me, let me tell you something. <laughs> <laughs> what with me? I can't. I can't. I can't get. I can't beat the music. You can't like, beat. It, especially, <laughs> Especially if it's a, a short song. Right, like, yeah. Damn, the hook came on. I'm done. You're like, what you got this on? Like, repeat? What's going on? That's why I say it, got, it had to be a challenge for like people like my dad and my granddad. <laughs> because the whole songs was long. <laughs> like, it took six minutes for the fucking first verse to come on. Like, don't, don't. Right. Don't, don't, don't. Like, and I then just, at the end, they repeating the same stuff yeah, over and over. Like, You're like, okay, yeah, all like, right. You sweat like, please, please, please in. Please in. <laughs> Uh, that's funny though. <laughs> like, come on, come on, hold on. man. Like. They go on forever. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 like I said, me and my girl, we never had music. We just get straight to it. Yeah. But then, like, we had times where like, like, uh, Martin was on. And then, like, a funny episode came on. Mm-hmm. Like, I start laughing. Like, it kind of like, messed up the whole. Little... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, we can't do no TV, no shows like that. Yeah. Nah. But see, when you got really... kids, like, y'all about to see that. You gotta get in yeah, when you can get it in, yeah. right? <laughs> my, my little Aiden come in like, boom! What y'all doing? <laughs> I, I, I jump over the bed like, how I go sing boy? <laughs> go high. <laughs> right, it's your turn. <laughs> Give me a, top three TV shows. Uh, TV shows. I watch a lot of cartoons actually. Hey, you good? <laughs> um, I like Hey Arnold. That's like my favorite thing. I can watch that like my girl watch Hey Arnold every, every night. <laughs> Um, I do like Martin. Okay. And um, what's another show? I can't think of a show, but I'll give you a genre. I like sci-fi stuff. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Cool, cool, Never cool. Sci-fi. So you don't be watching like the whole Power and stuff like that? No. So- I, I've tried to watch, you know, like those type of shows, but yeah. it's too much emotion going up and down. I don't like all of that. One show I think you should watch is, <laughs> since you were into this um, industry is uh, Atlanta. With Charlie yeah. Gabino. Okay. That's a good show. Like, like you and your wife, wife can, they all both enjoy mm-hmm. that show. It's funny, but he just, to me, is just a, a genius when it comes to music. Everything he do, stand up, the TV show, like, that show is funny as hell. Mm-hmm. Right? It's funny okay. as hell. Give me your um, we did, top three uh movies then. Top three movies. I like uh, Titanic. Okay. Um, I like... The Color Purple. Damn, I never watched it. You know what? That's, that's, that's the thing that's not black about me. I never you don't even watch it. And let's see. Um, I like like the Marvel movies and stuff okay. like that. I just, like, my, my, my fiance and my son making me like Marvel movies. Mm-hmm. All right, Titanic. You and your wife. The boat, boat went down. I got that one door. <laughs> that one Y'all door. Both, 
Hey, are y'all both gonna get up there? You gonna be like, uh, my man is just go ahead and freeze it there. Like, no, nah, I said we gonna find a way. We both gonna be up there for real. Man, but I, if I had to, she'll be up there. That was a big ass door though. Like, I'm about to get on your back, girl. Like, <laughs> right? That is stupid. Like, come on, y'all both could have floated on that thing. Yeah, that was a big. That was a big door. Like, she blew, got that whistle. Like, went crazy on that whistle. Like, damn, she blew it was so hard. My man just froze. Like, <laughs> right. I did this for you. <laughs> And when, a lot of times in relationships, you always find yourself doing the sacrifice. Like, yeah. Damn, I'm out, I'm out here burning the hell up. Mm-hmm. Like, like <laughs> Definitely. Even in relationships, like, like, not to get off of things, but, like, why? I heard um this one artist uh talk about in the song, like, basically, um she had, like, a Valentine's Day project. And was talking about the breakup. And she was talking about doing the breakup, like, how she could have did more with her music. Why, when we are in relationships, we put more into the relationship and, instead of, like, and take it away from our craft? A lot of times we put more into a relationship and we just like overlook what we are doing instead of like find that balance to do both. Mm-hmm. Like I, with me, like I know I know she hate me leaving on Sundays. And guess what? I'm leaving on Sundays. Yeah, like, yeah, this is yeah. what I like doing. Like <laughs> why do you do you see that with yourself or like or with others? Like a lot of times, what like, like we put too much into a relationship that we forget by ourselves. Right. I mean, I, I do see that, and um, to to. A certain extent I do that sometimes but I think that you gotta you gotta bring your significant other like over to what you're doing so like you see she right here yeah 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 for sure sitting next to me she <laughs> go to my interviews that I do with the different artists and stuff like that like she's involved in what I'm doing so that yeah. allows for um me to still do my craft but for us to still have time together you know what yeah, I mean yeah, yeah, so sure. I think that you know being able to do that has made it so mm. I haven't lost myself within yeah. the relationship. Now, what if it was something like she just wasn't into it, but she's still into you, and she wasn't around? Like, would you find yourself taking less time away from what you do? No. Yeah, because a lot of times, like, we, especially with dudes, like, like we'd be so much into this to this female, or whatever. It, it, it could be vice versa. We'd be too so much into invest into that person that we just forget about ourselves. Right. Well, a lot of times, like in relation for a relationship to last, you still gotta have your own. Exactly. Like, like sometimes we just forget about us. Like especially when you got kids, you you got so much time into the kids, the relationship. It's like you just like the the provider. You just like like it's no enjoyment for yourself. Yeah, and that's like, that's not healthy. I mean, that's just gonna cause resentment and things oh yeah, like that. Sure, and then yeah. for the relationship not to last. Yeah, yeah. You know? with me, I gotta have I gotta have this time to myself with basketball. I gotta be able to do that. Like as far mm-hmm. as coach, like I got to because at the end of the day, I think time apart sometimes or like time to yourself. I make the relationship grow mm-hmm. stronger because, yeah. like, give me a give me a, a a couple of seconds to miss your ass, right, like, right, right. Because I'm, I'm I'm like I'm stuck on you like Siamese twins, like, <laughs> like damn, right. Okay. And we we were just talking about that too. How um, well we was talking about how we act weird together, and I asked, her, I said, why we be acting so weird together? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And we were just saying how like because um we're always around each other. Yeah. Like she the person I see the most. Like oh, yeah, even. For sure. My family, like she's the person yeah. I see the most. So, yeah. but I think um, too, yeah, having that space. Yeah. You know, she going to see her family earlier today, so I'm have my time alone to edit some videos like, you, and stuff. Yeah, so. cause like, oh my god, you be I love that shit. When my son be gone, my son's gone, and my girl gone. Oh, I can be at the crib, my drawers. <laughs> and then she think I'm having fun. I'm in well, my drawers on stank. <laughs> Just watching basketball, like yeah, they gone. Right? Hell yeah. <laughs> Give me your uh, your top three foods. Food spaghetti. Oh hell yeah! <laughs> I love spaghetti. Um, mashed potatoes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, this is a dessert, but I love uh, ice cream. Oh yeah, yeah, ice cream. I'll be, I'll be loading that boy up with the chocolate syrup. <laughs> like, go crazy. The last, the last top three, you you know, you didn't want to drink today. Yeah. <laughs> but you got in last night. Right, right. What's your top three drinks? Um, so like I said, I do mainly dark liquor. I don't know that light stuff just it give you a headache. Yeah, give you a headache. No. But I do uh Hennessy. Okay. Um I do Crown Warrior, but I do the apple. Okay, apple's good. And um that's the only drink I will drink that's flavored. I don't like yeah. flavored um it's liquor. Not pretty good. Yeah. I'm I'm feeling it. <laughs> <laughs> and um actually I will drink um Bombay. That's I never had that. I heard yeah. that's pretty straight, but I never had that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, my mine's be like I like Hennessy, um, the white Hennessy. Okay. And uh, I like um, I like this Crown Vanilla, and then it's some it's some bourbon that my uncles be drinking now. I just I drink whatever they drink. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I try to go ahead and um and and get sophisticated when it comes to some get drinks. Sophisticated, yeah. Like, what was your first drink that you look at? Like, what the hell was I thinking drinking this? 
Mine's, why you think about that, was Seagram Gin 102 proof. I think. We used to go to um St. Andrews, me and my dog Weez and my dog Reg, and I'd go ahead and get that uh, orange juice, kill it until it's like a third of the cup, and then fill it with the um, Seagram Gin. Mm-hmm. And be messed up by my mind. Like, <laughs> no, I mean, I don't think there is a drink uh, that I had where I had that thought, but I know uh, when I mixed mm-hmm. some drinks before, like I mixed a, a dark with a light. Yeah, oh, you can't do and that. And yeah, it yeah. threw me off. Yeah, you can't but... do that. That threw you all the way off. <laughs> yeah. Like, like, to me, like, I thought that I was doing big things when I stepped up from Secret Gin to 1800. Mm-hmm. Like, we was drinking the hell out of 1800. That was like that big boy drink when you be like 19, like, oh, I'm, a, yeah. I'm, a, I'm at 1800 now. I'm good. Nah. I mean, I've drank some hundred proof before. Liquor really like you would think that a hundred proof would taste stronger or different than like yeah. a forty proof, but it really yeah. don't. But then, then yeah. like I, I found out, wine give you the worst headaches. Than yes, anything. it do. You I'm gotta not- you gotta drink a certain amount of wine for yeah. you not to have a headache. Oh yeah, for sure, for <laughs> sure. Speaking of, we were talking about this earlier. Like, give me a um a high moment or a jump moment, something funny that happened. You know, what I'm saying during this time. All right. Uh, like, oh yeah, I know you guys. <laughs> it ain't even gonna be that bad. It ain't gonna be that bad. Um, let's go with a drunk moment. Um, I I used to go to this club called um, Innuendos. It's a gay club, I heard Detroit. It. I heard yeah, it. I heard it. I heard it. it's like the only one that's well. Yeah. There's another one that's around, but okay. it's like the younger gay club, yeah. whatever, like that. But anyway, uh, it was my. I think it was my 21st birthday okay. and um i got drunk and i was on stage they got like a pole up there and yeah. stuff like that and like i was all dancing <laughs> around the pole <laughs> yeah and i fell right off the stage oh, my God. <laughs> fell right off the stage into her and some tables and chairs it was just all yeah. bad <laughs> That's, but th- that'd be funny because like i'd be telling people my um my drunk story was like before my um my best friend went to jail i was just drinking all type of stuff mm-hmm. like i'm talking about drinking hennessy drinking wine Smoking weed, uh, hit the black, and that's it. I know I'm like, you know, you drunk when you in the club and the only thing you see is high heels and shoes. <laughs> you can't look above that. Right. So I'm messed up and I, I I get to get doing a lap around the club and um, you know what I'm saying at a certain point I can't hold it, so I go outside, I throw up, but when I throw up, I get a little piece on this girl heels. Mm-hmm. Of course, the girl she went crazy, said she gonna get her her people to come beat me down. So I do this drunk run, <laughs> and that's the I know I'm walking like four or five miles until my mom picked me up, and I just <laughs> threw up all over the place. My mom found me. I'm on the bricks of this bank, like Man. it was terrible. Yeah. Well, th- speaking of that, so uh, at our um, bachelor uh, rap party, so we had it together, okay. and we got like a uh, a party bus and stuff, and okay. we was gonna go to the club first, yeah. and then to the strip club after. Okay. So. I made it to the club. <laughs> you know, I got up, went up to the door. They didn't even let us in because we had too many people with us. And yeah. I guess they seen we was all, you know, at yeah. the grades or whatever. But then uh, passed out in the in the uh, party bus, threw up and everything. Everybody then went into the um, the strip club. I had a fanny pack on me and I had like $500 in ones. Yeah, on he was me, ready. Ready to spend. <laughs> and I didn't even get to enjoy myself. But she went in there and she spent about half of that. And got her rob- some, got her some dances. Right, got her did, some dances. Did, did she rob you of the fanny pack? Yeah. <laughs> no, I think my fanny pack was still with me when I, wo- when I woke up. When I, woke up. I think she just took some out. Let me get that she just took some out. <laughs> That's funny. But yeah. but me and my uh, me and my fiance was talking about that the other day. She's like, "Are you really having a bachelor party? Like, only right? <laughs> it's like, only right, man." Because I know for sure she's talking about going to like this little um, um, in Chicago. I guess they had like this little lesbian little uh, parade, pr- pride, whatever. Mm-hmm. I don't know. What it is, yeah. but he's talking about going to that. I'm like, because you you'll be having in what June uh, or yeah, something? Probably, probably June or yeah, June, so right, yeah. Right. Probably. So my thing is like, I know for sure your girl's gonna take you to somewhere. <laughs> So that's what right. I'm gonna do me. Like, right. And real. I'm about to say she probably saying like, yeah, you know, we're just going to the the lesbian thing, thinking like it's gonna be like, you know, chill because she ain't no lesbian, yeah. but no, nah, she probably still gonna get wild in yeah, there. Go crazy. <laughs> Tickle babies all over the place. Right, right. <laughs> Might mess around and go from there to the regular club. Right. Dingly in your face. <laughs> <laughs> like, so guess what? I'm about to go crazy too. So this is the last time. Like, well no, it, it might not be. I might go to strictly like, afterwards. So it's crazy. <laughs> For sure. Right. Well, be okay, I'm gonna do that. <laughs> but uh, hey, but she will get at to, so I don't give a damn. Yeah, but, yeah, but no, no. Uh, so, um, give the people uh your, your your platform where they can follow you as far as like Instagram, Facebook, okay. whatever. So my personal um Instagram is so so Detroit. That's s dot o dot s dot o underscore Detroit. Mm-hmm. And then um, my uh, business Instagram is the Detour E N T. 
Okay. Yeah. That's where you get the, the, of course, Detroit, Detroit. Like what? Mm-hmm. That's where you came from. Yeah. Well, actually, I was driving on the freeway and I just seen like a detour sign. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no crazy guy, like I'm this. like oh cause you know I told you I have my old platform yeah. and then when that so what's, you say what's your old platform it's, it was called the real visual outlet Okay. Yeah, was so, that like with, with some people or and you just yeah I had stuff? a um, I had a partner that I was with um, and then we kind of like went our separate okay. ways um, and the, um, the the Instagram is gone now but the YouTube channel was still up with the interviews that we did under that platform but okay. when that ended I knew I knew that I still wanted to do mm-hmm. interviews but yeah. I couldn't keep that name because we came up with it together yeah. you know I didn't want to just take it over oh, yeah, you know what sure. I mean yeah. so um I was just driving on the freeway and I was thinking of names just yeah. really thinking of them just texting you know my wife like Chris like, what do you think about this we yeah, think about yeah. this and then finally I seen that and I'm like that's a nice play on words too you know yeah, what I mean because yeah, it got yeah. the D T yeah, in there yeah, for yeah, Detroit. Detroit I'm so so Detroit yeah, yeah. you know so I thought it was like the torrent like I'm like, Detroit, like right <laughs> so I was watching like oh just it's some E&T French going on. <laughs> <laughs> right day twilight right Nico Mons was like well, mine's a whole shot versus everybody. It was like that was like the playoff, the mistake. Mm. My mistake on deadpiff.com. It was a, a shot versus everybody, volume one, and stuff like that. So I wanted to keep everything under the same umbrella. So once you search that, you see the music, you see right. the, um, the podcast, and everything like that. So yeah, that's why I got the name from it. Some, some simple. Right, that's right. It, some yeah. Simple. So uh, you say, as far as like, how do you do your interviews? Like, is it every other week or? Um, well, we don't have any um, set schedule. What we want to be able to get to is doing it every single week and, okay. and um, posting one every single week. Okay. But right now, it's, it's real sporadic. So we may have a week where we have none. We mm-hmm. may have a week where we have six of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, so. Now, do you get mad? Like, have you ever had somebody like just, like just, uh, you know, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming so, so. And then you be like, all right, where you at? I can't come. Right. I ain't going to name nobody, but y'all know y'all are. Y'all know who y'all are. Y'all did me wrong for two weeks. Right. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> we, we haven't had something like that happen to where, like, it was up until the time and they didn't yeah. show up. But we yeah. haven't had it to where, like, up until the day and then they cancel. Okay. So, okay. we've had something like that. But, right. I, you know, I accommodate people. I'll be like, all right, we can do a reschedule. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and a lot of times, too, everything happens for a reason. And maybe something was about to happen in my day where I wasn't yeah. going to be able to make it. And so... Thank God you yeah. canceled it. Yeah, you know, but. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, and, and the last thing I want to ask you, uh, as far as like you doing this and stuff, like, is that a passion of yours to like maybe work for the like, the radio station one day? It's not a passion mm-hmm. of mine. Mm-hmm. I mean, I would prefer you know to create my own stuff. I don't really like working for nobody for real, for real. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, um, yeah, yeah. but like I said, it is something you know that I want to be able to to get it to. I mean, to grow it to whether it's that or something else. You okay. know. So. Okay. Cool. 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 All right, well, it was nice talking to you, you know what I'm saying, getting this stuff out of you and stuff. And if you ever want me on the show. I got you, I got, I got you. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I like your conversation, so oh, I'm yeah. definitely have you on the show, man. Oh, yeah, for sure, for sure. <laughs> and um, like I said, this is episode 14. You know what I'm saying? We got so-so in the building. So uh, until next time, you know what I'm saying, get your stuff together. You know what I'm saying? Peace out. Peace out. <laughs>